Alrighty, welcome. So today we want to talk about Pearson's correlation coefficient. So Pearson's correlation coefficient is essentially just a tool for measuring how strong an association is. So it appears on a scale. So R, the Pearson's correlation coefficient, or just the correlation coefficient, appears on a scale. So the scale runs between negative 1 to 1, where on negative 1 you've got perfect correlation, and on positive 1 you also have perfect correlation. So then we just need to work out what are the different boundaries in between. Well, the first little chunk is the first 25 on either side. And for both of these ones, it is considered to be strong. So if you have a value between you know, 0 0.8, well, that's between 0 0.75 and 1, that would be considered strong. The next little region between 0.75 and 0.5 is considered moderate. The next 0.25, between 0.25 and 0.5, is considered weak. And that just leaves us with this last chunk in the middle, which is considered to have no correlation or no association. So these are the different sort of measures of an R value. And it can be calculated using a very complicated formula that involves the mean and the standard deviation that you might see on your formula sheet. But generally speaking, when we want to calculate R, we use technology, in particular our calculator. So in to do it on the calculator, all you need to do is click mode 2, 2, enter the data, then clear the screen using the AC button, shift 1 to bring up the stat menu, and then press 5 for regression, and then click on R. And I believe R is the third option but I'm not 100% certain on that. So what's the other thing that R can tell us? Well, the other thing that R can tell us is whether or not the data is positively or negatively skewed. If the number that R gives is negative, then that means that it's negatively skewed, whereas if R is positive, then that means the data is positively skewed. And sorry, I used the word skew there. I don't actually mean the word skew, I just mean the word, uh, the direction of it. So for negative data, that means that it's going down, and for positive data, it means that it's going up. So just as a, as a little reminder of what negative and positive mean. So you can kind of get a sense of this is a better way of determining what the strength of data is. However, there's one more thing we need to talk about, which is the fact that even in all of this, there is no way to determine whether it is actually linear. Okay, That's really important. R does not tell us whether data is linear. It tells us how well a linear model fits it. For example, if I were to draw something like this, most of us would agree that's nonlinear because it's quite well curved. Yet, if I put an, a line through it, well, the line actually looks pretty good, okay? So even this might give us an R value of, say, 0 0.8, which using our scale, that's the strong positive, but it can't tell us that it's linear because the only way to check linear linearity, whether it's linear or not, is by graphing it. Or one other strategy, which we're going to look at later. But anyway, we've got a data set here, so let's have a practice using our calculator to determine R. Using the calculator, I'm getting the R value, Pearson's correlation coefficient, R, equal to negative 0 0.845. We generally round it to two decimal places, so I'm going to round that to 855. So since it's negative, that means that the, the association is negative. And because it's 85, it means that it is strong. Let's try using that in a sentence linking study time and number of hours spent at the gym. All right. So therefore, the, as the number of hours studying goes up, then the number of hours spent at the gym decreases strongly. And there we go. So there is a quick way of being able to determine association. Notice I can't say whether or not this is linear. The fact that it's negative 0.85 means that it could be linear, 
but it's not a guarantee. There are many things that look linear. Alrighty, I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.